I'm a fan of single location thrillers, especially when there's suspense and peril attached. Shudder's got a new movie in this genre called Night of the Hunted, pitting an unknown assailant against a helpless victim. So are you gonna wanna binge this one? When unsuspecting Alice stops at a remote gas station in the dead of night, she's made the plaything of a sociopath sniper with a secret vendetta. To survive, she must not only dodge his bullets and fight for her life, but also figure out who wants her dead and why. So the setup for this is straightforward. A woman is driving back home after a conference with a coworker. When they stop to get gas, they encounter shots being fired from an unknown location. Now that creates instant danger and dread. Alice then must keep herself out of the scope if she has any hopes of surviving the night. Now this stars Camille Rowe as Alice, and I most recently saw her in that harrowing Netflix movie, No Limit. She gets to use some of the breathtaking tension from that movie and put it in play here. And I like that she's a resourceful protagonist. I mean, yeah, she's pinned down and relatively helpless, but because she's trapped in a gas station mini-mart, she has some items at her disposal that might be of use to her survival. And the complications in this, they're standard and run of the bill, with phones just not being accessible, very deserted location, and then of course, you know, the dude with the gun who can fire off rounds amazingly fast and with some excellent accuracy. To add to the stress of the situation, the killer's motivations are completely unknown. If there do happen to be any passersby that stop to get gas, they can also become targets and victims. Now, I like the unease that this sets up, mostly because of the mysterious villain and then the ruthlessness with which he's carrying out his attack. Now, as part of the setting, there's a billboard that's illuminated and then peering down over the gas station. It's featured multiple times throughout the story, showcasing the words that are plastered across it. Now, there's a dual meaning contained within the marketing message. It can either say, God is nowhere, or God is now here. Both create a sense of loneliness or judgment, matching both the perspectives of the victim and the shooter. Now, there's also a good use of the environment and surrounding to instill suspense. There are shelving units and counters that Alice can hide behind, but she's also illuminated within the gas station, providing this brightly lit target for the shooter. And because the shooter is also in an undetermined location, Alice is almost constantly in a precarious spot, never knowing if she's exposed for a bullet just waiting to pierce her. Now, there's a little bit of shaky cam, but it's not bad or jostling. I mean, we're given the sense of movement, which also helps to amp up fear and anxiety. I appreciate how so many of the scenes, they're captured through varying focal lengths. Now, sometimes we get intimate closeness with Alice as she's struggling with something, and then other times we get to see very wide shots of the gas station. It's this solitary lit structure in the middle of absolute darkness. And these keep the visual interest going and also work to continue the alarming tone. Now, the movie's fairly short at just 90 minutes, but there comes a point when motions and conversations, they become repetitive. I mean, really, how long can a person be held captive in a location before things start to get just a bit boring? Now, the answer here, it's less than 90 minutes. Now, while I enjoyed the first portion of this movie, and as the dread mounted, I mean, it was intense and exciting, then more exposition was delivered, and that's when the whole thing just began to fall off the rails for me. Good gravy. The amount of triggering keywords that are inserted into this script, it's like Twitter vomited all of the theories and vileness and propaganda from every single viewpoint and dumped it into the dialogue. I mean, it comes across as very lazy and unfortunately even harms the momentum and the urgency of the story because it's just a regurgitation of any extremist messaging. Not knowing motives at the beginning of the movie instilled a massive sense of apprehension because everything's a mystery. I mean, who's shooting and why? Is there a purpose or is it just some random psycho? Once that answer is unveiled though, which is about halfway through, there's not much more tension that remains other than maybe the question of whether or not Alice is gonna survive. This is a very preachy story that lacks subtlety in its messaging and the lack of nuance ends up detracting from the impact of the narrative because it's so overt, spelling every single idea out in plain and simple language. Now, maybe that's a good thing so that the message isn't lost on people. For me, though, the blatant obviousness and the spoon feeding of the themes, it weakens the effectiveness of what the film is trying to convey. And what results is just this downward spiral into standard action type thriller that doesn't provide anything unique or exciting. Instead, choosing to be like so many other narratives, choosing agenda and preachiness over intelligent storytelling with effective themes and messaging. So overall, while Night of the Hunted has a great premise and works to establish dread and suspense almost immediately, the strength and persuasiveness of the story get trampled and ground into oblivion because the script prizes obviousness over nuanced substance. 
The acting from Camille Rowe is convincing, showcasing a strong sense of self-preservation while also maintaining ingenuity and resourcefulness. It's a shame that this is so preachy, because the narrative had the makings of a conversation starter ready for debate and scrutiny. There's no sex and nudity, a lot of profanity, and a bunch of brutal violence. I give Night of the Hunted two out of five couches. Now, it starts off well, but it just can't redeem itself once the sermon begins. So are you watching anything right now? Anything fun or worth recommending? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.